I'm gonna be honest with you, I am not a huge fan of the tone curve. It's one of those things that kind of seems a bit mysterious and I've never really found a place for it in my workflow until I started thinking about it differently. One of the ways that people tell you to use it is, oh, you know, you can create more contrast, apply an S curve, and you can definitely do that, but there are other ways to use it stylistically to give your photos a specific look and even create certain contrast within a certain color range. So I'm gonna show you you how I've learned to use the tone curve. If you're someone who's never used it, you'll probably find these tips helpful. And if you're someone who already uses it all the time, I guarantee this will speed up your workflow. Before we jump into Lightroom, I'm gonna give you a really brief explanation of what the tone curve actually is. Every pixel in your image is made up of red, green, and blue. And each of those red, green, and blue is assigned a value between zero being no color and 255 being full color. When you take both of those three values and you put them together, you have the infinite gamut of color that is available to you. Looking at Lightroom, the tone curve is actually a visual representation of that full range of color. We have the point curve over here, which represents overall brightness, and you have each of the red, green, and blue channels, which as I just discussed, are the values between zero and 255. If you actually hover your mouse over it, you'll see those values represented at the bottom. We have input and we have output. Input is what is actually existing within your photo. Output is the value that you're changing that to. So you can take any value within your image, say, you know, 100 here, and move it up and down and reassign that. So if I take 100 and I move it up, I'm now making it 140, which increases the brightness. So we can go up or we can go down, we can increase the brightness or we can decrease the brightness. Where this becomes super powerful is the fact that you can add multiple points along the curve and get really fine grain control over the brightness and the colors in your image. A lot of the times when people explain the tone curve or show how to use it, they do exactly what I just did, where they add points manually and drag them up and down but there is a way easier way to do this. So I'm just gonna reset the channel and then come over here to this little icon. If I click it and then I go to my image and click a portion of it, what I'm doing is directly manipulating that portion of the image. So you can see as I hover, the little point on the curve is showing you what value that you're editing. So if I reset this and I say, okay, come over here to the sky, you can see the sky is around 180. So I'm gonna add a point there. I'm just gonna click. I'm not gonna click and drag, I'm just gonna click. And I'm gonna come down here to you know this area and add another point, say around there. I'm gonna come to my jacket and leave a point right there. So essentially what I've done is I've pinned or locked in those values on the tone curve. I've told Lightroom, leave those values where they are. I like the brightness or I like the colors in those areas. Now, if I come down here to this darker area, I wanna create a bit more contrast. So I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag down. And what you can see is I've created contrast in just a specific portion of the image that I'm interested in. This picture overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it is. I don't need more contrast. The sky it was a really blank day, so there's no clouds or anything. I wanna leave that the way it is. My jacket, my face, I really like the way that appears, so I'm just gonna leave that. So that's why I locked in those portions of the image and then only edited the trail down here, which I wanted just a bit more contrast in. And what you can see is that the resulting tone curve actually doesn't look anything like an S curve at all. And so this is where we get into being able to customize your image Image using this little icon, not just guessing where on the tone curve those values that you are interested in editing actually exist. Let me show you another example where I've done something slightly different to increase the amount of color that I have in a specific portion of my image. So this image here, which I took last weekend, I went ahead, I've made all my edits to it, and I've actually done a pretty traditional S-curve. I've raised the blacks a little bit and lowered the highlights just to kind of give it a little bit more of a flat appearance. But if I go over to the blue channel, what you'll notice is I've done this inverted arc. And essentially what I was interested in doing was adding a bit more blue in the shadow. So if I come down here, and I raise that guy without having created any other points, you'll see that it's giving me this really dynamic color shift. 
And that's because it's saying, okay, we're gonna increase the blue here, but by doing so, the way you've pinned this, we're gonna decrease the amount of blue in this portion of the image, essentially adding a bit more yellow. And that's the look I was going for because this was a little bit more of a sunrise and I wanted to create an added bit of warmth inside of that image. Another thing to understand about the tone curve is that it isn't necessarily a hue and a saturation adjustment. It's more of an overall color balance. One of the things I really love is that the latest version of Lightroom actually shows you right within the tone curve, the red, green, and blue channels that if you add more green, that's what you're getting. But if you reduce green, it's not like you're desaturating green, you're actually letting the other two channels, in this case, the red and the blue, which when combined give you a purple or a magenta, to take over. So in this case, if I was to say, oh, I want less green, I'm actually adding more magenta. So I can go like this, and you can see that my image is getting more purple overall. One last example is this image here. So I've already gone ahead and made the base edits to this photo, adjusting the contrast and the shadows and the highlights to get them exactly where I want. But say I was posting this on Instagram or producing it for a client and that client had a specific look, maybe their theme is a bit more blue, a little bit more yellow. In this case, I wanna make this photo just a bit more red in the more neutral portions of it. So I'm gonna switch to the red curve I'm gonna use that same method and pin certain portions of the image that I'm interested in keeping exactly where they are. So in this case, the concrete of the road, I'm just gonna pin that. The highlights of the sky, I'm gonna pin that. But then I'm gonna come over here to the building on the right side and I want that to be a bit more red. So I'm gonna click and drag vertically to give it a bit more of a color shift. And maybe I wanna come over here and just raise the shadows. So I can really exaggerate this if I want to. I can come back in manually and move those points. But overall, I'm pretty happy with where I've landed. It's just a slight red adjustment that maybe then fits in with my Instagram grid a little bit better. In this case, because I have a streetcar featured in this image, I wanted it to be a bit more red just to go with that overall theme. And that's all I've got for the tone curve. So if you're someone who has never used the tone curve before, hopefully this has demystified it a bit and given you a bit of confidence to actually get started. If you are an expert and always apply that typical S curve, hopefully this has given you some creative inspiration to try something different for your photos or for the photos you're delivering to a client. If you found anything helpful at all in this video, consider giving it a thumbs up, leaving a comment or subscribing. And if you do, I will see you next time.